Hello there, and welcome to our short video on how to acquire the Focused Intensive Care ECHO, or FICE, views that are required for this accreditation. There are a few extra views in there as well, uh, which may be for your own learning benefit. And thank you very much for Heartworks for allowing us to use their kit in producing this video. The first window you're trying to get is a parasternal window. So you're trying to find a space between the ribs close to the sternum to get a view of the heart. And the first view you're trying to get is a parasternal long axis view with the pointer pointing towards the right shoulder. This gives you the view that you can see here to the right of the image. With the apex disappearing off to the left uh, and the aortic valve and mitral valve structures being present. Now, most anteriorly is the right ventricle, which is highlighted there and the septum, which separates the right ventricle from the left ventricle, highlighted there. To the bottom of the image, you have the inferior lateral wall of the left ventricle. The aortic valve can be seen quite clearly, and you see two out of the three cusps, and you also see the mitral valve, and ideally, you are trying to see both valve leaflets. The left atrium is also present, and the left atrium should actually form around a third of the depth of the whole heart, the other two thirds being made up of the left ventricular outflow tract and the right side of the heart. You can make a judgment on whether one of these structures is enlarged in this view, if it's got correctly. The aortic root can also be seen in this view as well. Now, as I said previously, this is a very good parasternal long axis view with the apex not being visualized. But by rocking the probe, which is a movement of the probe along its long axis, you can see more of the apex, or if you rock it the other way, you can see more of the aortic root. But the standard FICE view is, as shown before, with the aortic valve and mitral valve in the centre and the apex not visible. As shown here. Another important structure to recognise is the descending aorta, which you can see here, which allows you to identify fluid around the heart as either pericardial or pleural. By tilting the probe towards the right of the heart, you can see the right ventricular inflow view and the tricuspid valve. This is not a FICE view, but there just to illustrate that if you see this, this is not correct and you need to tilt the probe back towards the left of the heart. You tilt the probe too far to the left and you get the pulmonary artery and pul pulmonary valve, which again is useful but not in the context of FICE. Moving on to the next view, which is the same window between the ribs, but you are now looking at the heart in a short axis view, not a long axis view. This is called a parasternal short axis view. It's achieved by rotating the probe 90 degrees so the pointer is now pointing towards the left shoulder. This image often needs optimising by decreasing the depth and changing the focus point. The structures you see are the right ventricle, the left ventricle, and crucially, the papillary muscles are seen there, which actually identifies your landmark to make sure you image the right portion of the left ventricle. We'll discuss that in detail. By tilting the probe down towards the apex of the heart, the papillary muscles disappear. Now you're imaging the apex, but is not a FICE view. And indeed, if you accidentally look at this view and think you're looking at mid-papillary, you may think the left ventricle looks hyperdynamic. By tilting the probe back towards the head, you actually see the base of the heart and you see mitral valve leaflets, as identified there. Now, the ventricle here doesn't contract as much. So don't mistake this as mid-papillary level, as you may think the ventricle is hypocontractile. By tilting the probe even further towards the head, you actually see a short axis view of the aortic valve identified there. You also see the right ventricle, the right atrium, and the left atrium. This is interesting, but it's not a FICE view.
The next window is the apical window and you're trying to achieve an apical four chamber view. You need to slide the probe around until you find a gap between the ribs around where the apex is and produce the image as shown below. You often have to increase the depth and ensure that you have both mitral and tricuspid valves visible so you can accurately assess chamber size. And the structures you can see are the right ventricle, the left ventricle, the mitral valve, the tricuspid valve, the left atrium and the right atrium. If you tilt the probe more anteriorly, then you open up the left ventricular outflow tract and the aortic valve. Now this is not a vice view. And to get rid of it, you tilt the probe inferiorly to get back to the four chamber view. The final window is the subcostal window. You get an image of the heart by scanning through the liver, which is a very good acoustic window. And you get a four chamber view if the pointer is pointed towards around three o'clock um, towards the left of the patient. The structures you can see are shown, but to get this image, you often have to increase the depth and push quite hard. And this is actually quite uncomfortable for patients who are awake. In the context of cardiac arrest, this should be the first view you try and get, as it's often the easiest to get and the most useful in this setting. And the structures you can see are a triangular shaped right ventricle, a left ventricle, a right atrium and a left atrium there. The final view is achieved by rotating the probe 90 degrees so the pointer is now pointing towards the head. This allows you to image the IVC, which you can see entering the right atrium, as demonstrated on the image. And this may be useful in assessing the volume state of your critically unwell patient. Finally, to complete your scan, you image the, both lung bases looking for pleural effusions. You can also look for diaphragmatic movement, shown here, and sometimes you can even see lung consolidation. But that's another talk. And that completes your scan. So clean your machine, save your images, write your report, and congratulate yourself on a job well done.